and welcome to Brandy's Cards. I am so excited about tonight. It is a Friday night fun night live with me here in my craft room and um, I just look forward to these nights. I look forward to sharing with you and crafting with you. Um, I spend a lot of time in this room crafting and trying to create projects to share with you and in hopes to inspire you to create with the products that you have um, and send those cards out um, to others. So um, we did just shoot another video and we had some technical difficulties, so we're starting over. Um, so for those of you that are um, jumping on, thank you, sorry about that. Um, if you've watched you know, some YouTube live videos, you know that those, those things kind of happen from time to time, but I have my best guys on it, really. I have my whole IT crew here. And um, you're gonna get to meet them later, so I'm excited about that. But um, welcome, my name is Brandy Cox, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And um, you know, I am excited to share with you tonight. Now it has been a really crazy week. So it is November 6th, 2020, so if you're watching this video after November 6th, 2020, well then this is the replay. So I do wanna make sure that you, you know that. Um, but it has been a really crazy week. And so for my demonstrator friends out there, I know you guys are like, oh, tell me about it. So because of COVID and because of kind of the situation that we're in, Stampin' Up! Um, just had their on stage at home convention. That's right. So, you know, well, actually, I should say just had it. It's going on right now. Um, and so today, um, everybody just ended at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. And, um, you know, it's just a really a lot of fun. And it's really cool because on Wednesday night, the Creative 8 team and I did a pajama party. So if some of my team members are on here and you joined us for the pajama party, um, I hope that you had fun and I would love for you to share. It really was a hoot. I even called in the big guns. I called in my husband and because it was a pajama party, you know, we had to be in our PJs. And, you know, I tried to convince Doug to show up in his hot pink yoga pants, but no, I'm just totally kidding. <laughs> members, of course my family and my friends. So thank you guys for being my biggest cheerleaders and um, I love you and thank you for joining me and um, for celebrating that with me. Okay, so I guess I, I sent you guys an email and I said, okay, so you don't want to miss tonight because it's going to be a little bit different, right? Well, it is. It's going to be a little bit different. So I've got Amanda here with me and I want to know, what do you guys think we're going to do tonight? I mean, you know, I'm kind of not really dressed for crafting. These kind of might get in the way, but um, what do y'all think we're gonna do tonight? I wanna see some comments. Now, I can't actually see the comments. Um, I've got my IT team over there, and Amanda and Priscilla are in there, and they are kind of talking with you guys and helping me with questions and things. But um, does anybody have any idea? You guys have been asking me this for a long time, and you've been like, why haven't you shared or showed? It's because, <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of work to pull this together. It really is. And so, <laughs> is anybody guessed it yet? Cat Craig said doing a room tour. Oh, a room. Now, that's a really good idea, Cat. I like that idea. Yes, that's what we're doing today. So, um, if you guys have seen my old craft room tour, uh, that was a few years ago. And we had, it was this big bonus room, right? It was this really amazing bonus room. And when I decided that I wanted to start hosting classes, I told my husband, okay, so we can put a couple tables in that room, and this is going to 
going to be like my craft room and well then as it grew and more of my demonstrator and customer friends wanted to come to the parties, I finally told my husband, okay, I need to get that bed out of this room, right? So we went from like two tables to six, six foot ginormous tables. It was amazing. And some of uh, my customers at that time, some of y'all are on my team and you guys were there with me, right? Um, and so that craft room was amazing. And we just had lots of parties and lots of fun in there. As a matter of fact, we would craft until like three o'clock in the morning. And my husband, phones would start ringing and it was like, um, hello, <laughs> where are y'all? Um, so then I knew it was like, okay, gotta kick the ladies out. But at any rate, um, you know, we just, we started doing videos in our, in our old home, in our craft room. And it was just a lot of fun and I really enjoyed sharing. And so, you know, when we decided to move, which was four years ago, um, you know, I had the opportunity to kind of start over um, and just kind of, you know, start anew. And so what we decided was we were enjoying these videos so much and bringing you guys and trying to inspire you um, that we decided, okay, we are going to um, really designate our craft room to our back wall, our paper wall. That was really kind of the inspiration for this room. We downsized quite a lot, right? And so my space downsized. And so with that, I just wanted to make the best of my space. And I wanted to have this beautiful color wall. And so when you walk into my home, this room is right off. So if you walk in my home like this direction, on the left is our dining room, which is now the IT area for tonight. <laughs> and over here to the right is my craft room. So I just wanted this beautiful display of color and paper and inspiration when you walked in here because this is where I spend most of my time. I love this space and this room. So I'm super excited to share it with you. So before we get started, we're going to do a camera switch. So I'm going to have Dylan kind of do a camera switch here. So if you guys could just hang tight with me. Um, we're going to switch cameras and then we're going to bring you guys back on. And I'm excited. I think we might introduce our IT team as well. So you guys can kind of see, uh, see everything that is involved and who is all here with us. Um, and so Doug is kind of doing this little camera switcheroo. And Amanda, is uh, there's some fun comments coming in? Are people? Oh, people are very excited about what's happening tonight, and some of the guesses that came in after cats, uh -huh. or if we were going to drink wine tonight. Oh gosh, I would love to drink some wine um, afterwards for sure. Yes, <laughs> and absolutely afterwards for sure. And my, I think our personal favorite was at Kathleen Charlton wanted to know if you were going to announce that y'all were pregnant. Oh, <laughs> well, here's my little people. This is my IT team. That's all right. So you, you can see what we've got going on here. So this was when Brainy suggested that we do the craft room tour live. I was like, <laughs> hmm. So uh, obviously we can see we definitely had a few difficulties tonight. It's a little more challenging, but we got Dylan here who's playing producer tonight and I'm playing cameraman. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler's backing him up with everybody. And we got Miss Amanda over there. Hi. All right, and then you can see as Brandy was saying, you know, this is our front door literally as you walk into the house And so in our foyer and you can see we've got our tripod and lights and set up And so we uh, it's a it's a lot to uh, to manage, but we're gonna give it our best shot So we're gonna give it our best shot. All right. You ready, baby? Yeah, I think right. so. Let's do Come this. on in Okay All right, so how about we start over in this direction? All right. Okay so we gotta kind of work around those lights, right? Yep. Okay, so, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, so um, these are where my stand sets are. And so these, I'm not sure exactly what these are called. I didn't actually research these, but these are from Ikea. There's actually three of them here. And um, I have all of my stamp sets in here. I've got quite a few retired sets. So I've been a demonstrator 14 years in October. So if you guys are going, holy moly, that's a lot of stamp sets. I've had plenty of time to collect them. <laughs> so I know your next question is, are they alphabetized? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Because I would sit here and go, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I'd so, like. So how do you do it now, babe? 
Okay, so life is beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's not a great system. <laughs> I had somebody email me, which I really appreciate, saying, what if you had, you know, like catalog them and stamp them and put them in a book? You know, quite honestly, we have so much going on with the boys and sports and life and my business and caring for my family that, you know, this works for me, honestly, and it, it works just fine. I mean, yeah, it could be better. And if Tanya is on here watching, one of my dearest friends and team members, she's going, I have tried for years to organize her. <laughs> she has. And one day, I'm going to call her and say, Tanya, I'm ready. <laughs> um, but anyway, those are my stamp sets. And as you can see, you know, I try to keep most of, you know, most of my current stuff here at the top. And then the more of the, the retired stuff kind of moves to the bottom. But a lot of times I put the retired stuff on my retired store so that you guys can have the opportunity to, um, to find some things that you may have missed or were looking for and um, give you the opportunity to purchase them there. Um, yeah, so that is my stamp set. Okay, so over here, uh, these are all of like, I love this box. Um, I don't know if this is a box, but it's a card holder and it's from Stampin' Storage. It's absolutely fabulous. And so I love it because, um, you know, I love to keep your guys' cards on display. And I look through them here and I also, for cards in the mail, um, you know, I keep them in here, the cards that I've shown, and the cards I'm getting ready to show, and of course the ones that I've gotten in the mail and so forth. And then of course I have some of my most current cards here too. I think having them out on display for my family and friends and for customers that come over or team members, I just think it's really important so they can see what we're doing with all of this beautiful stuff, right? Um, so that's what this is. And let's see. Okay, so I just recently purchased these guys from Sound and Storage. So these are great. These are like cubes. And so these are separate, but this piece here is actually a custom made piece. It's a one piece. And I bought two of those and I'm excited to show you. So this isn't full yet. I know, it's not that I don't have enough stuff. It's just, I just haven't filled them up yet. So in here, I know, look at that. It's kind of like my stamp set. It's not totally organized. Um, well, it's not organized. Um, these are actually um, a lot of my retired, um, my retired gems and things. And so, you know, I can't get rid of those. And so I keep them in here. And so that's where those are at. And then, so these are really great. They pull out, they're nice and deep. You can, you know, put just about anything in there. Um, you know, cards fit in there really nice too. I just, I like how you can put cards in there as well. So those are really cool, but the coolest thing, and again, these, and I do have, um, I should have a post on Brandy's cards that's live, and I have all the links to these products. So don't worry, you're gonna be able to see the links to them. So this, look at that. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? So these acrylic things, they come out, right? And so you can fill them with your different embellishments and fun little pieces, right? And that just slides in, check this one out. Same thing here. And so this is just a different configuration that you can purchase. And speaking of different configuration, um, there's one down here as well. Check that one out. So this one can go either way, just kind of depends on how you want to put it in there. Um, but I like these little spots that I can just kind of tuck away some extra things. Now one thing I'm excited to share with you too is this like, I think it's called a grid system or something like that. But this is a, like a really cool way that I have found, let me tell you, storing ink refills has been a nightmare for me. Um, and so I started out by taking like a little gem, a little dot, and like matching it with the color. That worked really well until, I don't know, I got too many. Oh my word. And so anyway, these little, um, you put these together, they're fairly inexpensive, and they just kind of crisscross like a grid. It pulls out if you decide you don't want it, but it fits these like, you know, your little champagne misters and, you know, all that sort of stuff can go in there quite nicely. So I really, 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 really like that. So I'm gonna pull that up. Okay, okay, so you what do you guys think? Are you guys enjoying it? I hope so. How's it going over there, Amanda? IT crew, are we doing okay? Yeah. We're doing good, everybody loves it. Okay. Yay. Okay, 
So should we move on? Yeah. Okay, here we go. All right, so over here, um, so I try to keep things that are current, right? Because you guys would get quite cranky with me if I started making different cards and sharing them with pride. She can't buy anymore. You guys would get cranky with me, wouldn't you? And so I try to, you know, I try to create with stuff that's current. And so in here is, um, this is a, a piece that is six by six. And in here, I just put my different six by six designer series papers, right? And so, you know, it's just kind of nice. I try to keep that up to date. And so I know where those papers are when it comes time to use them. Okay, so let me just kind of share a little bit about my system here. Um, you know, I get a lot of comments about my paper wall, and it just, I absolutely love it. It's, it's honestly just, um, it's just so wonderful. And so this system is actually a, this is an eight piece cube, one big piece. It's called a calyx unit, and it's um, from Ikea. And it's fairly inexpensive. I think this piece was $69.99. And these down here, these are a four-piece calyx unit. And so two, two by two, right? And so this piece, I think, is $49.99. So fairly inexpensive cube-type pieces. And so they're across the bottom. And then this unit here, I believe, is what? A five by five cube piece, this big piece here in the middle. And so then what I've done is I've purchased some stamp and storage units. And um, they just slip right in. So you can buy standard units, or you can buy the units that are actually tailored to fit inside these cubes. It's absolutely brilliant. So thank you, Stamp and Storage, for bringing that to us. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and so I store my punches here. And so look at that one. Is that not an oldie but goodie? That's got my old address and everything on there. Um, so you can see, I have a hard time getting rid of all of my retired stuff too. So I do keep some of those as well. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of what that is. And look at this, I have another one of these. So I've got a couple extra um, Stampin' Blends in there. I use a lot of certain colors. So I keep a couple extra just in the event that I need them. Okay, so moving on to this. This is oh, my Stampin' Blends. You guys know how much I love to color with my Stampin' Blends. And so here they are. Um, no, they're not organized in any specific order. However, I do try to keep them light and dark together. So that is your Balby Blue, right? And so I try to keep them right next to each other, so I at least have that. Um, but you know, I just really love the beauty of the color here. Now these, these pieces, I will also have links to on Brandy's Cards. So you can go to brandyscards.com and you'll be able to see a link to that. Now these pieces don't fill up the cube, right? But they, they fit, but they don't fill it. So I use that as an opportunity to kind of keep my Stampin' Up! catalogs that are current in here. And I also keep a, one of my little books for the storage. And I also have my beginner brochure. And then I keep my Stampin' Up! notebook. So if you're on my team, um, Stampin' Up! just came up with these, just recently started selling these. So um, if you've joined my team, you have received one of these. I like to pack up, package up a, a bag of logo merchandise and good stuff. And, and so this is one thing that I send to my new team members. Um, I just really, really enjoy doing that. Um, you know, it's kind of a nice place to jot down ideas. Like in the middle of the night when you're, you wake up and you have this idea about, you know, the newest card you're going to make. I just, I do that in here too, and I kind of keep ideas, and you guys email me ideas too, which I love, and so I wrote those down, and I try to refer back to that um, for those ideas. All right, okay, so let me show you up here with this Calyx, Calyx system from Ikea. There's a couple different things. You can actually purchase these doors that you can put on, um, you know, they're just you know, they're just doors that you can actually put on here, or you can um, you can mount a drawer. So we open a drawer. Sure. Okay, let's open a drawer. Oh, like that. So I don't really have any fancy system for my ribbons. There are lots of different ways that I have seen and that sort of thing. But I will be honest with you. Um, I keep all the current ribbons, and the ones that I use the most, I have a couple extra of. And that's how I keep them. I just keep them in there and I, I keep my twine in there and so forth. But these drawers you can actually purchase to mount inside your calyx cube. 
so it's quite nice inside that unit. Um, and so that's how I got the drawers and stuff on there. So pretty cool, right? I'm excited. Thank you guys for being here with me tonight. Um, we're really excited. We wanted to, as we tried to figure out how we were going to do this, I was like, you know, I really want to come live and just share it like it is, you know, and show you guys, um, you know, kind of how I do things. So, um, okay, so up here, this little section right here is kind of basically all of my current uh, designer series papers. So that's all kind of right here. And you guys have seen me show you guys before. I love these little, um, what do I want to say, these um, little envelope these acrylic pieces, um, pockets, I guess would be a better word for it. And so um, I'm, I've got a link to those as well on Brandy's card. So don't worry, you can go there and find that. Um, but I'd love to do that. And so I don't actually put stickers on these because you're probably thinking, why don't you have a sticker on there? Um, well, the reason that I don't is because, um, you know, for me, Stampin' Up! retires things. And so there's, you know, there's about, what, 15 or so designer series papers that are in the catalog, and so I just keep them here. And um, I pretty much know what they are. Um, I usually keep the this piece here in the back, which comes in your paper. That way it has the name of the designer series paper in there. And I generally know what I'm looking for, too. So I keep those all in here. Now, I do love glitter, right? And so I have saved all of my glimmer paper. So I have glimmer paper from, you know, a while ago, but I just love, 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 love the glimmer paper. So I keep all of that kind of tucked over here, and I've also kept myself some of the peacock, you know, foil papers and things, because those always are fun to use on special cards and things. But yeah, so Ovellum is up here. My watercolor paper is kind of tightly tucked in here. Um, and so then I also keep quite a lot of white, Whisper White. You guys know I do a lot of cards on white card bases. Um, and so I keep my white up here. And then of course, you know, I just, oh, I know what you guys are thinking. Do you have a list of the colors on your wall and how you organize them? <sighs> I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't. And so you're thinking, well, how did you do that? So let me say that I took from our old house, we had boxes of cardstock, and it took me about four to five hours, and I literally stood here, and let me show you. Okay, so that one looks, yeah, that one's kind of pink. So, oh, I'm going to put it over here. And I just kind of did that until... I came up with something that I thought was colorful and beautiful to the eye. Um, and so that's how I did it. And so I don't know. And to be quite honest with you, there are colors on here that I really don't know what they are anymore. And so for example, here is one of them. Who remembers that? Oh yeah, so that's how I organized the name of the, the paper. I know, I hope I'm not disappointing y'all. I'm being totally real here. And um, so this is how I... What was the name of that? Lost Lagoon. Yeah, it is a beautiful color and it was a favorite for a long time. And so on all of my cardstocks here, the very first sheet is the name of the cardstock. Um, and not all of them have a name. They should have a name, um, but, but they don't. So, okay, so moving on from that. Um, so that's kind of fun. All right, so the other really wonderful thing that I love is this right here. So let's see, is it this one? Okay, so do you guys wonder how I store my blocks? <laughs> do you wonder? You guys probably have a better system than I do, but here's my blocks. Oh, so that's where my blocks are. They're just kind of all in here, but you know what? It works great for me because I can you know, sit in my, my chair here and I can have access to them. So that is where I keep all of my blocks. And okay, this is bad, I know. Look at my scissors. Do, they, do you guys have any drawers like this? <laughs> this is my scissor drawer. And um, you know, it, it works for me and I love my space. And I think that's what's most important is, you know, you don't need 
anything like crazy fancy. You just need to tailor your space to how it works for you, right? Um, and so here is, um, here's kind of another, this is adhesives, right? So I keep different adhesives in here and some litter, you know, some Winkastella and that sort of thing. And you know, one thing that I love is I can sit here in my little space and I can just go, oh yeah, I need some glue and I can just grab it. Or I can turn, now, you know, you gotta be able to twist a little bit, you know, so you know, it works. And so over here and so forth. <laughs> you guys are going, oh my gosh, she's a hot mess. I'm a fun hot mess. <laughs> Um, so, okay, so anyway, that is kind of, you know, there's certain things that I use over and over. Now, Doug, I forgot to show them my scraps. Oh, okay. So, why don't you come back over here. I'm holding this cord because I want to make sure that you guys can hear me really well. But one of the questions that I get quite often is, where do you keep your scraps? So, are you guys ready? It is a Rubbermaid bin right here. Right there, Rubbermaid all the way. And so, <laughs> and so I actually keep all of my white scraps in here so that I can easily grab them. And when I'm crafting, I honestly just kind of pull this bin by my feet or up by me so I can reach it. But that's where I keep them. And so you're probably like, okay, well, those are your scraps, but there's not very many. Actually, I get lots and lots and lots of scraps because I'm always making cards to send out to my family, friends, and to my customers. And because of that, I get lots of scraps. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. But a lot of times what I do is I actually take those scraps and if, if I get an email or a call from some of you, um, I will box those up and send those to you. So I keep all of my scraps because that is like treasure in there, isn't it? And so I'll box up those things and, and sometimes I get phone calls from demonstrators or customers that are doing ministries and they just need some extra card stocks for their customers and so forth. And um, so that kind of, you know, that helps me know that others are enjoying that card stock and it's not going to waste. Because we don't want to recycle that beautiful card stock. No, 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 no. No, we want to let others use it and love on it, right? Okay, so let's head back over here. And um, are we still doing okay over there, IT team? We're yes. doing good. People are glad that you keep some of the favorite colors of card stock. They're just too good to let go. They are too good to let go. Okay, so over here, we're kind of back to some more storage. And so, you know, I didn't think we needed to open every single door. A lot of it is just different storage stuff. Um, card stocks and, you know, just different things. Um, my heat, heat gun and, and that sort of thing. Um, but in here, you know, we've got some more of these nice little pullouts, right? I really like these a lot. Now I do want to tell you that these units actually come, they come in um, natural wood, right? And so as you can see, I only painted the top. That's really all you see. Sometimes I find that if you paint the whole unit, it can get, I don't know if you live in maybe a humid place, it might get kind of sticky, because sometimes paint can get sticky. Um, but of course, if you would prefer it painted, you, you certainly could do that. But I just painted the front, um, and so that's really all you see here in the craft room, right? Um, so I, I love that. Okay, so uh, I've also got my stamp pads. Oh, there's one missing. Oh, hang tight. It's just Jade. I was using that earlier for my host code cards. Perfect. Okay. So is it in any specific order? No, it's not. I would love it to be. And as a matter of fact, Amanda came over earlier. She said, are you going to organize your stamp pads? And I said, no, I, I would love to. But I wanted to show you, you know, just how I am, and this is how it is. Um, and so whenever I'm looking for a color, I just kind of come over and look for my color. So <laughs> is it the best system? I don't know, but it works for me, right? Doug's behind the camera shaking his head going, oh dear, I need to help her, and I didn't realize how bad. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to share a secret with you. Okay, so shh, don't tell anyone. I have a secret hiding space. That's right, it's a secret hiding space where I have some hidden treasure. That's right. And so um, I have this hiding space because these units are so fabulous that in their, you know, they, they're they kind of not really wide. So check this out. Let me show you. Oh, 
here we go. You're, they're going, oh my gosh, don't dump all those on you. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Is that your idea of some hidden treasure, honey? Um, <laughs> we have a, a different perspective on what's treasure, but hey, you know, that's good. I Go can't believe you're showing them. I know, I know. Amanda was like, if something ever happens to you, make sure you leave me a note behind there, right? I do. Um, so anyway, it's kind of a fun little story spot. Now, you know, because that's where my old stamp heads are, and sometimes you guys call me or email me and say, Brandy, I'm looking for Lost Lagoon. And you guys know that if I have it, that I will generally send it to you. But I don't always have it anymore because I send it to people. But, um, but anyway, that's my little hiding spot. But don't tell anybody, okay? If you come to my house, shh, don't tell Okay. So, oh, I gotta show you one more cool thing. Um, so one cool thing is, let me just kind of pull one of these out really quick and get an old stamp pad. Because I think it's kind of a cool thing to show you. If you guys don't have a minute here. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in, and so some of you might have been thinking, well, I have the old style stamp pads, and now I have some new stamp pads, um, but they're kind of frustrating because maybe it doesn't fit real well. Let's see, I should have probably taken that out earlier. My hand doesn't want to go all the way up in there. <laughs> okay, here we go. So here's an old stamp pad, and these went in there quite perfectly, right? And so it's kind of, it's in there, pretty easy to kind of pull out. And so one of the cool things is, is this company has these little blocks. And this is what they look like. And they're like little spacers. And so the spacer gives you just enough, like, um, it takes up some room, right? So that way when you put your stamp pad in there, it just fits perfectly where you have that leverage to pull it out. So it's really cool. Um, they're really inexpensive, and it has been life-changing. So I absolutely love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so I think that's it for my paper wall. Um, so I think moving on over here is, this is my little cart. And so I love this cart. And so you guys are probably like, oh, what is she making? Well, I'm working on my customer thank you notes this month. And so that's what all of these are. Um, but this cart is wonderful. And I can just move it because, you know, I stamp in all rooms of the house. Um, if my boys and my husband are watching football and I want to be a part of it, um, I will, you know, take it to the different places and so forth. But, um, yeah, so that's my cart. I love that cart. And then basically then what I do here is I went ahead and left this out because I thought you might enjoy seeing it. When I'm working on my customer thank you notes, I basically cut everything and I prepare it. And so this month I decided that I was going to send everybody one of the, um, I was going to make up one of the cards from the paper pumpkin. I loved it so much, but I actually switched mine up a little bit. And um, I used the Thinking of You from the Woven Heirloom. 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 <laughs> I used that. And then I just kind of did my gems a little different. And here, let me show you in case some of you have purchased this. I actually cut this little flower off, right? And I popped it up. So I cut it off and trimmed it a bit. And then I popped it up underneath there. So it just kind of added like another dimension, another flower. So I just thought it was really, really pretty. And um, I went back and forth between like doing Christmas or a thank you. Um, but I honestly thought right now, um, with what's going on in our world, in our country. Um, thinking of you would probably be a card that you could gift to a friend or a family member. So that's why I went that direction. Okay, so you guys want to move on? How's it going over there, Amanda? We're doing good. Everybody is very excited. They're loving it. Oh, uh, that makes my heart happy. Okay, so let's move on over here. So this area over here um, is quite special to me. Um, so, oh, no getting tears in my eyes. This is what Sarah Douglas does when she <laughs> gets on stage. Um, so this picture here, this is the co-founder of Stampin' Up! Shelly Gardner. This is her daughter, Sarah Douglas. Sarah is now the CEO of Stampin' Up! And um, so when I first, I, I hit um, a million dollars, the 13th demonstrator to, um, to reach a million dollars in sales. And so they flew me out to Salt Lake City and they had a wonderful celebration for me. 
And so this is actually in Shelly's house, and we were stamping in her craft room, and it was just, I mean, to be in her home was amazing. Um, and then this picture I just love because I feel like it just feels like so much joy. I was, I was just overwhelmed with joy and love and being celebrated. Um, of course, my husband, we were actually at Shelly's house, and um, just beautiful landscaping and the mountains in the back. And so we had had lunch with her and her family, and so we got a quick picture on the way out. And then, of course, this picture just means the world to me. Um, Shelly embracing me as she embraces every single demonstrator. And uh, she just is an amazing, they're an amazing family. And I just feel so blessed to be a part of Stampin' Up. So, okay, I need to like get myself together. Okay, um, so this here is a Stampin' Pin Tree. That's a pin tree. So um, if you're a demonstrator and you're probably thinking, okay, where in the world did you get that? That's really fun. Well, this was actually something that, you know, they would sell at convention. So it was just kind of a convention piece. And I purchased it not knowing what I was going to do with it. It's been on display here in my craft room for years. And I finally decided, okay, I want a place to store my pins. And so this is a pin from 2014 from Founder's Circle. Um, and Founder's Circle was the top 100 of the company. And they took you out and did a retreat. Um, here is our 10-year pin. So we've been doing it 10 years. Um, my leadership pin. So I've got some leadership pins for the last few years on here. Um, let me see, there's another one on here that I absolutely just, is so special. There's a Hilton Head pin. It was the very first vacation that I won with Stampin' Up, or earned, I should say. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Look at that. That pin is probably where it all started. My husband was like, I had to get $1,000 more in sales. And I was feeling quite defeated. And I was like, I don't know that anybody will buy from me. And he and I said, I'm just, I can't. And he says, no, you can't give up. It could be your first vacation that you could earn for your family. So um, he talked me into jumping back into it. And um, I had an open house and invited a bunch of my customers and so forth. And they all helped me get to that point. And we were quite proud to earn that vacation for our family. So um, a lot of blessings here, and I'm so grateful for, for it all. Um, and so over here, these are kind of fun. So when you cross a million dollars in sales, like I said, Stampin' Up! celebrates you in a big way. And so look at this beautiful card that Shelly sent me. And uh, actually, Sarah, too, of course. And it's just beautiful and um, absolutely gorgeous. And like, you know, Stampin' Up! does in a big way. They make their own envelopes. And they're just beautifully, beautifully designed. And so this was a tag on one of the gifts. And of course, I save everything. Um, just like I save, you know, cards that I receive. And I save everything. And so this one was also another one of the Stampin' Up! cards. And so, you know, they celebrate their demonstrators and they're just amazing. And so this, um, this was another one of the cards that they sent me. And so it kind of opens up. It's an, kind of an easel type card, I believe. Kind of sits like that, right? So it's just really, really beautiful. And um, I just absolutely love it. So I keep those on display and I thought that it would be Nice to share those with you. So I do want to show you something else that's quite special. Um, I have this little Build-A-Bear. Check him out. I don't know if he's actually a Build-A-Bear, but at one of our conventions, Stampin' Up! also sold this guy. It's kind of, kind of fun little apron. And do you guys recognize that ribbon? Yeah, there was a Stampin' Up! ribbon a few years ago. I absolutely loved it. No, we can't buy this anymore. I'm sorry, and I won't give him up. <laughs> he, I would sleep with him if I could, but I don't want to squash him and ruin him. But he is just so special to me. Um, so I didn't want you to see him at first because I wanted to talk about him. So he's going to go back up here because um, that's where he normally is. All right, so these, you guys probably remember um, if you've been with Stampin' Up! for a while. Um, and as you can see, these have been through a lot. They're kind of faded, but these are like the best bins in the whole world. And so I have, you know, in here I've got some, you know, random cards and things. But I just I keep my stamparatus accessible right there. And I keep my trimmer. And I also have my little mini trimmer, which I love. And all of these have, down here I have some of my dies. Um, 
And no, they are not alphabetical. So when you email me and you say, Brandy, do you have the retired such and such? Hang tight. <laughs> That's why it takes me a couple days. <laughs> right, Amanda? Yeah, I'm yes. laughing because it's so true. I know, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm it's like a scavenger hunt. It's a scavenger hunt, right? But generally we find it. Um, and there's a couple bins like that because again, I've been a demonstrator for 14 years. And you know, I love this stuff as much as y'all do. So I do hang on to it. And as you can see, like here, here's a lot of some more of the retired ones, right? So if anybody is looking for hmm, Eastern medallions, Mayflowers, Birds in Bloom, I got them, okay? So here we go. There we go, that's that. So that's what those are. And those are kind of tucked in there. And then over in here, I have, um, you know, I just have some of my embossing folders. Yeah, this is how I keep them. <laughs> I just, I'm showing you guys the real brandy, right? Um, and so I just keep them in here. And when I'm looking for something specific, now for those of you, for my customers, I actually over the summer, for one of your gifts, um, I spent all summer and I hired um, the teenagers from the neighborhood and we embossed our little hearts out so that you guys would have this wonderful little piece that you can hang in your craft room or put with your embossing folders so that you could, um, you know, instead of having to come over here and look through this, you can actually go through here and go, oh, you know, I think I would like that one. And so these were, these were made for you guys. And for those of you that received them, I hope that you're enjoying them. And I hope that you have them with your embossing folders and use that as a resource. And I actually put the name of the cardstock and the embossing folders on the back. So that was kind of fun. And then of course I keep my grid paper and that sort of stuff kind of right here because I'd like to keep it flat. So I have my grid papers. I also have the small grid paper too. This was the new grid paper that we got for on stage. Um, so I just received that. So this is not even open yet. All right. So, um, you know, and then in here, these are also bins. Um, and there's, you know, there's just really different things. I think I have stays on in one. This one here is um, my embossing folders that I have engraved for my team. And so my team is Blooms and Butterflies. My blooms are you know, they're creating and they're sharing and um, they're blossoming and they're just loving what sharing Stampin' Up. And my butterflies are flying. They're doing the same thing with Stampin' Up products, but they're also selling the product. And so that's my team name. And so when a new, you know, when a new team member joins my team, I like to send them a fun package. So they would receive one of those. All right, so I see another guy right here. Isn't this a beauty, right? So um, for those of you that have purchased the cut and emboss machine from me, I hope you are loving it. I have heard so many great reviews um, from the cut and emboss machine. As a matter of fact, Amanda, yes, don't you have a box? Oh, this one that I, yeah. yeah I've been using it as a footrest. Do you want me to bring it to you? Rest. Oh my word. <laughs> yeah, you want me to bring it? Yes, I'm, I need to call in the IT team here. Oh. I didn't know there was. Watch your steps. It's heavy. I can get it. She's got her slippers on, her cat slippers. I was not as fancy. I didn't know what happened. <laughs> I didn't know this was coming. All right. So, what do you think's in that box? Um, I don't know. Well, I see the name of the logo, so it's something. Stamp it up. Okay. Well, let's open it. What do you think's in there? Um, cardboard. Look, cardboard. Always can use some cardboard for something. Yes, I right? say everything. Oh, stamp it, cut, and emboss machine. Plates, really? So is there something plates? else in there? Uh, what else is in there? Yeah, hold on. What is this under? Oh, what? Oh, it's another oh. brand new couple. Oh my gosh! Okay. Oh, is that for me? No, it's just like, like it's not a problem. What? It's not like Oprah and you're going to say that. You're going to everybody watching? Yeah, I don't so who is the YouTuber that does that? I need to get a hold of him, Dylan. What's his name? What? The YouTuber that like gives stuff away to everybody. Everyone. Well, what's his name? A lot of you would do it. Okay, well, I can't afford to do it. I wish that I could send you all one of these, but I can't afford to do that. 
However, um, it is an amazing machine, and it looks like I have an extra. And so I want to make somebody's Christmas or holiday really, really special. That's what I want to do. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. So what I'm thinking is, is how about we give, how about we give you until December 24th? What do you think? Huh? December 24th. Yes. If you leave a comment in my yeah. video, we will just pick a random comment, and I will post a video on Brandy's cards Christmas morning. And so you'll have to check back and see if you were the winner of the Cut and Boss machine. That's and if they cool. win and they promise to share it with me, I'll give them the handle. <laughs> oh, okay. She's I'm so just curious. So, so are we going to give it to them wrapped? Like in a prison? In a prison? I think yeah. it might get crunched with the yeah. post office. It might oh. get kind of scrunched up. But we could put a bow in there or something. Yeah. yeah. Don't it's be like, excited either way. It's I like put it in a car, really. It is. Right Do you know what cool this is? Dylan, does that look as cool as a car to you? <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, so anyway, I'm super excited about this. And um, I purchased, for you. thank you. I purchased this and I thought, you know, I just appreciate you guys so much and for tuning in. And, you know, although I wish I was Oprah and I could buy everyone one, I can't. So if you guys could, you know, leave a comment. Um, I will absolutely do a random draw and announce the winner on December 25th, which Christmas morning, right? So I hope to make somebody's Christmas a little extra special. You definitely so, will with that. I know. Now you can't be taking it. <laughs> and I'll it's try. Amazing. I know where it's at. You know where I live. <laughs> exactly right. So if you guys are enjoying my craft room tour, I would love for you to help me build and grow my channel by clicking the, um, the like button. You could just give me a thumbs up, a like button, a like button, that would be fantastic. Or if you could subscribe, that would be great too. I really, really appreciate that. Because um, it does, it helps me grow my channel. And Dylan has reminded me that I'm really close to 70,000 subscribers. So let's see if we can get there, right? Um, so that's pretty, it's 400 away. 400 away? So 69.6. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> see, you know. I'm cool because I have a few <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know. Um, but anyway, so it is just super fun. And as you can see, you know, I just love to, to be in this room and in this space. It is really, truly um, my happy place for sure. So I think I'm going to come over here. Uh, and some questions? Yeah, I think I'm going to answer some questions. Right. And so I think Let's I'm going switch to cameras. switch cameras. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tuck this embossing, switch the cut and emboss machine away and see if y'all have some questions for me. So, Miss Amanda, if you could kind of, since I can't see the computer. Yes, ma'am. you could kind of have a look and see what kind of questions are out there or comments of, oh, Brandy, you are <laughs> a crazy one. Um, I'd love to answer them for you. And, you know, just kind of share with you, um, you know, candidly. So let me know if there's any questions. I know it takes a few minutes for that to kind of come up. Okay. Uh, yeah, we um, have a couple that I've taken notes through. Okay. Um, and some people want to know, did you paint the shelves yourself or did you spray paint them? What kind of, how did you do that? Yeah, that's a very good question. So we kind of did both, quite honestly. When we moved in, I was actually traveling and working. And so my mother-in-law and my father-in-law and Doug and the boys, they actually spray painted the fronts of those. And so remember, it's the calyx unit, which is the cubes, and those are white, right? And so they actually spray painted those. And then like I shared just a little bit ago, on some of the other units, I actually just painted those. I just took a paintbrush and some white paint and I just painted the fronts. Again, and the reason that I did that is because, you know, I mean, you only see the fronts. And I was afraid that if I painted the whole thing with humidity, it's, it's pretty humid here in North Carolina. And I was afraid that it might stick. Sometimes paint's sticky. So um, I, didn't, I didn't paint everything. No, I just painted the fronts. So, all right, Amanda, what else you got for me? All right. Um, Natalie asked, what's your favorite color at the moment? We got lots of comments about the beautiful wall. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So, 
my favorite color at the moment. So you know what? I will be honest with you. I love all of the Stampin' Up! colors. It's really hard. Um, but I am a mother of boys. And I like girly and frilly stuff. So I would have to say that a Melon Mambo or a Bermuda Bay would probably be my favorite. But I make a lot of cards using Daffodil Delight, Granny Apple Green, and Old Olive because I love those too. Um, so if you guys have been following my channel and, and you guys you know, see some of the cards I make, I, Doug will say to me, can we use some other colors? And so that's what's fun about the color challenges too, is that you know, those kind of pull you out of that, what I want to say, that um, comfortable space, and it kind of encourages you to use other colors. So I love that. So thank you, Natalie. I appreciate you asking that question. Um, and also, we've got quite a few people want to know if you've hidden any chocolate. Oh, <laughs> I've hidden any chocolate. Well, um, you know, that is a very good question. Um, I haven't. Like, what am I thinking? I mean, OMG. Um, you know, honestly, we have lots of allergies in the house. Um, and so we're dairy free. And we've got, we've got some allergies and things. So to be quite honest with you, our snacks a lot of times are nuts nuts and and things like that so we do have a lot of those types of things throughout the house but chocolates probably not so much although you know i could use a good s'more i just had an amazing s'more at halloween awesome <laughs> um what do you do what with um the cards you get in the mail or yeah. swaps and stuff with all the cards you receive that is a really good question so um we i absolutely love to receive your cards in the mail. It is such a blessing. And please keep sending them. I enjoy them so much. And so what I do is I have a place where I display them. I find so much inspiration from what you guys are doing. I mean, y'all are so talented. And so I'm so inspired by that. And so I go through and I look at them and I get ideas and, and it's kind of, you know, it's amazing. And then of course your notes just means so much to me. So thank you for all of the kind notes and the messages the love and the support. Um, but to answer the question, Amanda, what do I do with my cards? So after about a year or so, I save them for about a year. And then what I do is I donate them to a charity. Your cards are so special to me, it is hard to let them go. But it's also, I can't save everything, right? So I want others to enjoy them and to love on them as well. And so what I do is I either, I package some of them up for the troops, or I'll send them to the Ronald McDonald House, or I give them to churches so that they can, you know, bless their uh, congregation with birthday cards and, you know, encouragement cards and things like that. So I do that as well. And then some of you guys have contacted me and said, hey, I have a ministry at the, the senior center, or I have a ministry over here, and so I'll send you some cards that you can use for your ministry. So if you, you know, if you, uh, I'll be doing that probably around December. So if you, uh, you know, are needing some cards or wanting some, let me know. I would love to bless you with all of the wonderful blessings that I have been sent. So Deborah has asked, um, why you send a blank card when you place an order with you as a thank you? Yeah, so that's a really good question, Deborah. I appreciate that question so much. The reason I send you a blank card, and it doesn't always say thank you on the card. Again, let me show you this. So the reason that this is actually the Christmas paper pumpkin, the holiday paper pumpkin. It came with Merry Christmas and joy, you know, and holiday. But I chose thinking of you. And when I send this to my customers for their host code gift, my hope is, is that you will fill this card out and we'll send it to somebody that you're thinking of. So I kind of look at it like this is a gift too. I've taken time, I love to make these cards for you, and by giving you a thinking of you or a thank you, um, right now more than any time with COVID and the things that are going on in our world, um, I just think it's really, really important that we're sending our cards. And so I get phone calls and emails sometimes from some of my customers that say, Brandy, you know what? You sent me a card the other day, and as much as I would have loved to have kept it, it was perfect for my neighbor who's going through X, Y, Z. And so that's why, um, that's why I send you a blank card. 
because I'm hoping that you will re-gift it when the time is right. Yeah. So. Someone else asked, okay. is your craft room always nice and neat and clean, or are you a messy crafter? Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely messy. Absolutely. I'm a hot mess. I mean, you can see how well I organize. <laughs> well, it took you four years to get it clean enough where we could do a tour. Oh, absolutely. Four <laughs> solid years before we could do a craft room tour. Yeah, coming straight from my husband, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, absolutely. So the joke is, is that, you know, in my old craft room, we would have all of these tables, right? And I would have all these projects going and literally like all over different projects. And my husband would come in and I'd be sitting on the floor in the corner, cutting paper and stamping and complaining about how bad my back hurts. And he's like, why when you have six, six foot tables in here, why are you on the floor? It's the only space that's not a mess. <laughs> and that's a true story, right, Doug? Yeah, that's true. Yes. And so now I will say that um, because this room is actually right off of when you enter my home, now during COVID, now nobody's really coming over. Although I love company and we love to host. Um, but right now, because of COVID, um, we're not getting a lot of, you know, a lot of company. But I do like to try to keep this room nice and clean so that when we do have company, people can admire um, you know, our paper wall and all the things that are in here. And I'm always hoping that one of my neighbors will you know, express an interest and will want to stamp with me. So a friend or a family member will want to enjoy some crafting with me. Um, so I always have some cards out and have some projects. But let me just tell you that I take my cards everywhere. So last weekend, we had a soccer tournament and it was like, you know, a drive an hour and a half out here and then soccer game and then an hour and a half back. And then we'd go the other direction for another soccer game and then come back and then go back. I mean, it was so much fun, but oh my goodness, it was crazy. So I still want to make cards for all of you because I love sending you cards. So I take these boxes with me and Doug will laugh at me sometimes. He's like, oh my gosh, are you really like stamping and driving? Oh yeah, I stamp, I drive, I take cards to soccer games, I take them to Chick-fil-A. I, a lot of times, have card stuff with me on airplanes. Oh yeah, I love to craft on airplanes um, when I go home to visit my family and stuff. So yeah, so my craft room is not always neat, but because of its location, I do try to keep it um, fairly neat, if you will, so. Well, it's funny, because Linda says, if anyone's a neat crafter, they must be doing it wrong. <laughs> that's exactly right, Linda. If you're a neat stamper, then there is something that's not right, right? <laughs> yes, I completely, totally agree with that. Um, I generally have ink on my hands, um, you know, and so, yeah, absolutely. And glitter on my face, that's always kind of <laughs> funny. Um, you know, I'll go to my Pilates class in the morning because um, that is something that is just really good for me for um, to keep me for me for health reasons. And so I will be like sparkling, and I'm sure some of my friends there are like, "Where have you been?" <laughs> um, but anyway, it's uh, it's quite funny. But do you have a favorite go-to stamp set? Is Tina Earl wants to know. A favorite go-to stamp set. So that's a really good question. Um, you know, honestly, it's sentiments. That's probably, I would say, a stamp set with sentiments is probably would be a go-to stamp set for me. Um, and I also love butterflies and flowers, of course. So I tend to gravitate towards those. Um, but as far as one that pops off the wall, I'll have to give a plug to Hold On To Hope. <laughs> because Hold On To Hope was the stamp set that I showed you my pictures with Shelly and Sarah that when I earned my, you know, when I was able to achieve my one million in sales, being the 13th person, I had the opportunity to uh, design a stamp set. And the stamp set and the, the dies that I designed were the Hold On To Hope stamp set and Crosses of Hope. And so that stamp set was inspired by my team because um, my team means so much to me and I'm so grateful for you all. And so that's, you know, that's kind of where it started. Um, but I also wanted a stamp set that, um, in, you know, that inspired others with hope and, um, you know, just, I don't know, offered blessings. Um, you know, my husband's on the board of the Pounding for Parker Foundation. 
And Parker is uh, one of my sons, Dylan's best friends. And Parker has inoperable brain cancer. And he is, what, 12, 11 years old? 12 years old? 11. 11. And so Parker went through 17 months of chemo. And during that whole process, he was here with us. And, you know, we, um, we just saw him through that experience. And so when I was designing my stamp set and I was thinking about my team and what my business meant to me and what all of you meant to me and the stories that you've shared with me and how much you love me and I love you um, and Parker and how we just need hope and joy. And, um, and so that's where that stamp set came from. So I guess if I had to pull one of them off the wall and go to set, I would probably say, um, you know, it might be the Hold On To Hope stamp set. So. Dylan's going to ask the next question. All right, Dylan, what you got? So this is from Lois. Lois Montague. Montague. Okay. Why did you just decide to join Stampin' Up? Why did I decide to join Stampin' Up? That's a great question. So, um, you know, I hate to be lengthy. Are, are you guys okay? Yeah. I mean, is everybody happy and we're doing okay? <laughs> Dylan says, yeah, Mom. <laughs> so you're doing good. Okay. Um, so yeah, so why did I decide to join Stampin' Up? Well, it's really kind of a funny story. I, uh, we were living across town, and I was traveling. I actually worked for Canon, the camera manufacturer, and I was their spokesperson. And so I would, I would be their spokesperson talking about photography equipment and cinematography and um, broadcasting. And I would go to these shows, and I would work with famous photographers and things. And I never really knew what I was talking about. Um, really, truly. I had scripts, right? And so I didn't really, I grew up in Michigan. My family is still there. I love Michigan, so mm, Michigan. And so my family is still there. And so um, I moved here to be with Doug and to get married. And I traveled. I traveled like eight or nine months of the year, so I was gone a lot. And so I just didn't really establish friends here. Um, and so my upline, um, I saw, I think it was in on Facebook maybe, she posted a party, like a stamping party. I had no idea what it was, um, but it sounded fun, and it was basically kind of marketed to like local moms, right? And so I had, you know, I think I only had one little one at that point, but um, it was marketed to the local moms, and so I called her up and I said, hey Jill, listen, I, um, I just, I want to come to your party, I don't really know what y'all are doing, I don't have anything. Um, but I'd like to come. And she welcomed me with open arms. And I came. And she called it a stamp camp, which, you know, is super fun. It's where you cards are designed, and then you go and you make those cards, right? And so we're all stamping away, and we're having fun. And so it's like midnight. And I go home, and I get into bed with my husband. And I'm like, wake up, wake up. And he's like, what? You know, and I'm like, I want to sell this stuff. He's like, what stuff? <laughs> and I'm like, I want to sell Stampin' Up! And he was like, really? What is it? You know, and so I'm like, okay, I'll just tell you in the morning. And so then I started to cry because I'm like, okay, well, if I sell it, nobody's going to buy it from me. <laughs> and I pouted. I did. I pouted, and I'm like, all the customers are already with everybody, and nobody will buy it from me. And it was like, pathetic, really. And he was like, okay, honey, listen you know what, there's plenty of customers and you will find people that will enjoy what you have to offer and share and will purchase product from you one day, I promise you. And so that's kind of how I started. And um, the really cool thing was, is for the first six years, I was a hobbyist. I, you know, when you join Stampin' Up, you can join as a hobby demonstrator and receive the discounts, right? So, you know, if you guys are interested in that, I will say, the best time to join is going to be during the celebration in January. Stampin' Up! will come out with a fantastic promotion. But, um, you know, so I thought, you know, I'm, you could join as a hobbyist, and so that's what I did. I worked as a spokesperson, and I traveled, um, and so I decided that um, I was just going to just have fun with it. And so I would invite the ladies over, and we would craft in my craft room until wee hours of the night, truly. I know if Tanya or, or Carolyn or you know Marianne or if any of you guys are on here, you guys know there were some late nights. Amanda and, Matt and Patty, her mama. And so anyway, um, 
phones, what husbands would start calling and different things. And um, so, you know, but it was late hours of the night. And I would say to my husband, you know, you know, why, you know, why did you ever, like, let me just do that? Like, why didn't you ever stop me? It was like 3 o'clock in the morning. We had toddlers. And he would always say to me, you know what, it brought you so much joy. And the joy came from watching others craft and create and the creations that, you know, and sharing the cards that I designed and watching people's confidence grow and watching them create and teaching them. It just meant so much to me. And I absolutely loved it. And so um, that's pretty much how it all started. And um, from there, about six years into it, um, you know, we, <laughs> okay, we actually went and got our taxes done. And I knew nothing about business. Yes. And so we got our taxes done. And we were sitting there, and my husband's like, honey, we lost money on taxes. And the accountant says, yeah, in like crafting supplies. And so my husband was like, okay, so if we're gonna start to do this as a business, I might need to help you. We can't give away free glue to everybody that comes in the house. <laughs> so anyway, we had to adjust some things as we transitioned from a hobby demonstrator to a career demonstrator. So that's kind of how it happened. And I have met some of my most best friends um, and I've had the most amazing fellowship nights and so and I have a wonderful team and of course my Stampin' Up! family as well. So um, my boys have grown up as Stampin' Up! kiddos and um, so we're going on, we're on 14 years. So we're at starting year 15 um, and I wouldn't change a thing. I took a leap of faith probably what five years ago and decided okay um, you know because I was traveling so much that the boys would come with me and stay in hotels. My grandma Gertie which she a lot of times is watching and she would fly out to like Vegas and she would you know help me with the boys because Doug was traveling too and so she would help me with the boys and um, I decided okay I'm going to take a leap of faith and I am going to do Stampin' Up! full time and that's what I did and I don't regret that decision one bit I have loved every second of it and to know all of you who email me and call me is the biggest blessing ever so I'm sorry for the long, drawn-out answer, but I was excited to share. So. I think we're going to do maybe two more questions. Two more questions? Okay. Right. Rosemary Schmidt. Rosemary, hi! <laughs> she's super funny. She's awesome. She said she's ready to tell her husband that Doug helped you set up everything <laughs> and wants to know if he actually did it, though. <laughs> but she's telling her husband he did it anyway. So. Oh. <laughs> no, Doug is actually, you know, it's funny, Doug did set up... You mean like set up all of this mm -hmm. or the video? All everything. Much I, better at the video than I am that stuff. Yeah. yeah. But I did help with that. Yeah, did. you did. You yeah. did. But you're not a handyman. Not really. No. 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 And he, he he's not offended. No, you're not offended. No. I you're, missed that gene. What? I didn't get that yeah, gene. His brother and his dad got that gene. Um, and so, but you helped, yeah. right? I think one time we were putting together a kid toy and we almost got divorced. That was the only time <laughs> we almost got divorced. Was this one kid toy? And I thought it was a certain way. He thought it was a certain way. There were screws left. It was a bad situation. <laughs> but um, anyway, so what else you got? We got one more? We had one more that was just special. Several people have asked how Grandma Gertie is doing through all this. Oh, gosh, I appreciate that. Thank you. So Grandma Derek Gertie is doing great. Um, she she could home. be watching. She could be watching, yes. Maybe. Um, if her internet is working, she could be watching, or if she's got her password correct. I love you, Grandma Gertie, but she called me in a panic two days ago. Oh my gosh, I locked myself out and I can't figure out which button. And I'm like, Grandma, you have to stop pressing the buttons. You have to let it reset. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so anyway, um, Grandma is doing fantastic. She is, just like all of us, trying to remain positive and trying to kind of get through the difficult times that we're in. Um, but I feel like, you know, her outlet has been her crafts and her crocheting and all of those things. And I feel like those things are therapy for us, quite honestly. Truly, um, those things are helping keeping us going. And so the fact that Stampin' Up! didn't close and that I could still be here to create for you and to inspire you and to take your mind off of some of the things that are going on throughout the day. 
I truly feel blessed by that. So um, pretty amazing. And um, I know Gertie is feeling truly loved. So whomever, you know, asked that question, thank Quite you. Quite a few people. Quite a few people. So Grandma Gertie and I will do a video again one day. I do have to coach her a little bit and get her, you know, because she's like, ah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but, you know, but then after she did it, right, Grandma? You know it's true. And then after she did it, she told everybody she was a YouTube star and that, <laughs> and that you know, she was like a total YouTube star and you had to check her out. Her whole senior center did like, you know, a write-up on her and being on YouTube. So if you are watching her channel today and you're like, who's Gertie? Um, Gertie is my sweet grandma from Michigan, and um, we haven't seen each other in over a year because of COVID, but um, there is a YouTube video that she shot with me. Um, and she's waiting on her commission. She's she, oh yeah, she's definitely waiting on her commission. So if y'all could go and just like that video or something, so <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so I think that I have kept you guys long enough, and I think we're gonna wrap up tonight. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. You have waited a long time for a craft room tour, and to be quite honest with you, I didn't want to disappoint you that I didn't have everything organized and that I wasn't perfectly neat or perfectly alphabetical or color coordinated. Um, so I just felt kind of nervous, like, you know, does anybody really want to see the crazy brandy? Um, but over time, as you guys kept asking and I kept cleaning and organizing, um, I finally came to like, okay, I'm ready to share my space and I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope that um, you go in and you love on your space and if it's not perfect, it is perfect for you and you have amazing things in there so use them and enjoy them. And if I can kind of close with one thing, um, you know, don't worry about being perfect with your cards. Don't worry if it's a little crooked or it's not stamped straight. Most importantly right now, our world is in so much turmoil. And so we need to make and send cards. You need to call people. We need to let people know that we're thinking of them and we love them. And when I receive your emails and your phone calls and your text messages, I feel so loved and so full of joy. And so I appreciate you guys sharing with me and letting me pray for you and just um, being my cheerleader and for supporting my Stampin' Up! business. I couldn't, I wouldn't be here um, and you know, I've earned the achievements that I've earned if I didn't have the love and the support from all of you, from my team members and my customers. So thank you for being a Brandy Scarts customer, for being a loved Bloomsday Butterfly team member, the Stampin' Up! family, and of course my family and friends who are also here supporting me. So thank you guys so much. And don't forget to go to Brandy's Cards because I've taken pictures and I've put links to the products so that you guys can find them. And of course, if I miss something, let me know. Don't forget to give me, to click the like button so that we can grow the channel and of course the video. And don't forget to put a comment in there because I have a cut and emboss machine that I want to give away on Christmas morning. So don't forget to check back. Of course, we're going to post, post it on Brandy's cards as well, so y'all don't forget about it, okay? All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye, everybody.